Hi, in this video, we'll show you more examples of using the error propagation formula. If you watch a previous video, I believe you can actually do it yourself. So please try to pause the video and do these questions, these questions, and also these questions. So pause the video now, try first, and we'll go through it together. 2,000 years later. For the first example, you may not find it relate to any about error but then you can still use the equation that we learned to help us to find out the answer so um, what is given is the equation about the pendulum and the question said if the length changed by four percent how much percent it will change for the period as well uh, you can actually use the way that you learn in maths but then I, what I would do is I'll do the way uh, with the formula we learned so uh, if you are thinking this more like a error propagation rule then what we I would we could do is delta t over t log uh, which is a percentage error equals to the delta l over l log but then here is a square root so square root actually means uh, to the power of 1 over 2 so here with what we talk about in terms of the power we can put the index at the front so 1 over 2 here as for the g and also pi, they are both constant and in that case we can just ignore it, same as uh, the number 2. So if you think about this, then this basically means the percentage error of t and this is percentage error of l. And that is the same as when you say changing the variable, the magnitude by a certain percent. So uh, basically the answer uh, would then be about like how the period will change would simply be half of 4% and that is simply 2%. So this is one way uh, that you may be able to apply this equation onto a question like this. Um, however, I don't think uh, you will see a similar question like this in the exam, but I guess it's good to know about it. The next question should be very easy for you, so let me show you how we can do it. In case you don't know how to deal with a situation that is 1 over q or express it properly, you can think about uh, letting y to be 1 over q, all right, if this could somehow make you understand better. So what we are trying to find is the so-called uncertainty of 1 over q, that means uncertainty of y. I think the question itself is not very clear. Are they looking for absolute uncertainty or percentage or fractional uncertainty? So uh, I guess I'll just find the fractional because that would give us more information. So what we do need to do, that's to say, uh, would need to find the average value first. So y log will equal to 1 over q log, which is 1 over 3.4. And so um, in terms of the number, it will equal to a long uh, decimal point, which I will keep as 2 sigfig. So, uh, 29 yeah 0 0.29 and then what you have to do is to find out the uncertainty of y that is a delta y over y log and that should equal to the cause we said 1 divide q right it's the same as simply as q so it will be delta q over q log all right and so by substitution you will find out delta y which is in fact the one that you want to find 1 over q uh, over y log, y log is the one that we find so 0 0.29 delta q is 0 0.5 from this, this is delta q over q log which is 3.4 so once again uh, pass the time to the calculator and I should actually keep it as one sig fig, so delta y equals to 0 0.04 in this case. So that is to say, uh, if you really want to express it, then that will be 0 0.29 plus or minus 0 0.04. But since we are finding out uncertainty, and once again, I don't know which one they want to find. So I guess I would say uh, if you want to find the fractional uncertainty, then it will be delta y over y log then that would be 0 0.04 over 0 0.29 well actually this is meaningless right I mean this is the same as you are trying to find out Q's 
uncertainty so anyway if I need to express it then that's gonna be well 0 0.138 that probably run it up to 0 0.1 only okay so that is for part A as for part B uh, it would be the same so y equals to q square so y log equals to 3.4 square so 3.4 square is 11.56 you can actually keep the whole number if you want to and then only run up when you reach the final answer and then delta y over y log equals to here will be 2 of q so delta q over q log so uh, we would have delta y e over 11.56 from here equals to 2 and then this one is similar to what we did in part a and then you can find delta y s Three point four, but then uh, because obviously here there's only one surface, and also no matter what our uncertainty, absolute uncertainty, usually express it in one sig fig. So I will run it to three only. Okay, so if you really want to do fraction, I am pretty sure you know how to do it. So I'll leave it to you. Last question is the best question in this video because this often. Uh, is asked in the past paper in a similar format. The thing is, uh, it's quite tricky. You have to think about which one is being measured and which one is being calculated. Right? I emphasized this in the previous video already. So you have to read the question very carefully, otherwise you'll get the wrong answer even if you apply the method properly. So in this question, it said volume is being measured and also the height as well. The variable or the parameter they want you to find out is radius. So that means radius is the one that being calculated, right? Being the process data. So what you have to do is you should not. Okay, I'll show you a wrong example first. Okay, wrong example. What you, uh, some people may do is, oh, okay, when I see this equation, then I'll just list, okay, delta V over V log, and then pi we ignore, and then for R, we, we go for 2, uh, delta R over R log plus delta H over H log. All right, so some people may simply do that without reading the question. So then in this case, then uh, people will say, hey, so volume is 4%, right, because we don't know, the specific delta v and v log so we can just write four percent because it's this is basically the fraction uncertainty that's the same as percentage uncertainty you just have to times hundred percent and so you will find oh um then we'll keep this here because it, this is the unknown and then h percentage error will be two percent and therefore if you solve this equation you get uh one percent only basically for the r so you may think that the answer will be 1% and you fell into the trap. So the actual way that you should be doing, remember this is wrong, okay? I encourage you to write this down to remind yourself that this is wrong, right? So don't do this uh, in, in the future. The actual way of doing it uh, should be rearranging the formula because the way that you calculate R should actually be v divide pi h square root yes that's right so in this case then you can now finally deduce the formula because if you again look at the data booklet you always start with whatever you want to calculate with the main term in the equation and then you apply the equation so in this case then we can finally declare that uh, the percentage error of our would equals to half of because there is a square root once again of the delta v one and also the delta r one. 
okay and so in this case then we would have the well simply this as the answer will be half of 4% and 2% and that means this should be 6 divided by 2 that means 3% so you can clearly see that uh, with these two approach they would reach different methods so they are not equivalent at all and the only correct approach is the one that I show you uh, in a second